welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, hi, I am Emma. Today I thought it would be quite interesting to do a Q&A style video just on the transition from city life to remote living or rural living because it's coming up to the first year anniversary when myself and my partner Fraser pretty much packed up our life in the city. We lived in Edinburgh in Scotland all of our lives, proper city kids through and through. We moved to this tiny little fishing village on the Isle of Skye called Elgol. I'd been a our dream for like a long long time um, but anyway since then I've kind of gotten quite a few questions from family and friends but also just from people kind of like searching the Isle of Skye or particularly where we are on Instagram and I've had quite a few messages just from like strangers being really lovely but just kind of like asking for a little bit of advice or just questions in general. This video is for you and it's for your questions that were asked. I put a little question box on my Instagram just, just to ask if you had any questions particularly on the transition from city life to rural living because it is a big change it's not to be taken lightly we're just going to get right into it and into the first question so the first question was do you miss all the vegan cafes and restaurants in the city that one is a resounding yes i really do there's no uber eats there's no takeaways there, there are actually no takeaways like say you're sitting on a a Sunday night and you're a little bit hungover and you can't be bothered cooking and you can't be bothered going anywhere or driving anywhere like you just have to suck it up and cook because you can't just get on the phone to someone and order a pizza straight to your house it's just not a thing there are a couple of places in Elgol where we live there's like a bistro and I think there's another place that's like a restaurant um, but it's not really geared towards like vegan foods. Obviously in Edinburgh there are particular cafes and restaurants that, that just are all vegan and you can get amazing food from them. You, you just need to kind of like change your perception of how your days look because going out to cafes and restaurants and things like that that are so easily accessible in the city it's just not a thing when you're living really remote. Yes, definitely. I mean... I do miss all the cafes and restaurants in the city. Is it enough that I wouldn't move here because of that? No. Obviously that's a personal choice. People just maybe couldn't live without that. The next question was, how do you deal with being so secluded? Do you miss having people around in the city? Again, that's a yes. I do miss having people around in the city. Like obviously where we live there are people. <laughs> We're not just like on this island on our own. When you're walking around in the city, there's just always people around. And I think when we moved to a remote location, that was one of the things that, to be honest, I was ready to leave behind. I am very kind of like introvert and I like being on my own quite a lot. And I think when you go for walks around here, it is very, very peaceful because nine times out of ten, you could go a walk and literally not see a single soul. Maybe not in the touristy periods, because in the touristy periods in the summer, like, there's people around all the time which is quite comforting in a way but just in general yeah there just aren't a whole load of people around it's more got like a little community feeling around at this place like everybody knows each other and you know when you go out you can bump into people but in general when you go for walks and things there aren't people around and sometimes I miss it but I'd say like on the whole, I don't think I miss that. I think it depends personally what kind of person you are. If you love having people around and you know you just feel like you couldn't live somewhere where you did go a walk and didn't bump into anyone or you just didn't have that like human contact even if you weren't talking to them. You know like if you walk, if you're from Edinburgh or a city or whatever and you walk up and down like the city centre and there's just lots of people around and you love that kind of like hustle and bustle feeling, then maybe moving somewhere remote wouldn't be for you because you just don't really get that all that much depending on how rural you do go and how do I deal with being so secluded I feel like I just kind of deal with it quite well like I say I am quite introvert and I am quite quiet and I've always just been that way just ever since I was a kid I just loved spending time on my own it is a personal preference I know that everybody is different but there was definitely a bit of a wobble and a transition to being more secluded but yeah i think you know living out here we, we get so many visitors and i feel like back in the city if someone said oh i'm going to come and stay for like a week a weekend i feel like i would have freaked out <laughs> but since moving out here i feel like i welcome it and i love it because we're on our own 
all of the time that when we get a visitor it just feels really special and really nice. So it's kind of like changed my perception around that as well. I welcome visitors with open arms. I love it when people come and stay. It's just such a nice thing. So yeah, hope that answers that question for you. The next one is how do you shop for food? What supermarkets are in Sky? So food wise it's actually quite nice. There is a local shop in Elgol who basically we, we place an order for fruit and veg each week. Um, it comes from like a wholesaler so basically we just, there's a little online form where you just fill out what you want, how many of what you want. It is primarily fruit and veg for us and then we just go and collect that every week so it's nice and handy. The shop is literally right next to our house. Out with that the supermarkets, there aren't as many supermarkets as there is in the cities, like there's no Tesco's or Sainsbury's or Marks and Spencer's, anything like that really close to like where we are. The closest actual supermarket is a place called The Co-op and it's quite small, it's not like a huge supermarket but it does have pretty much everything you would need. The prices are probably a little bit higher than what you could get at a Tesco or something. It's kind of geared I feel mostly towards tourists um, because they'll pay higher prices when they're in the Isle of Skye. Um, yeah, there's a co-op but that is literally like a 40 minute drive from where we are. So I'd say maybe like once a week Fraser drives in and gets like a bunch of stuff that we need. If he's ever in Edinburgh he always goes to like a bigger supermarket like Tesco or something and he'll bring it back just so that, um, I don't know, you can stock up. I feel like since um, moving remote it is something we've had to think about a lot more and get like a lot more savvy with because you can't again just think oh I want this or that you know from the shops and there's no like 24 hour Asla just down the road you really need to be on top of thinking of what you need in the house and bulk buy. Bulk buy is your friend. We've always got like plenty of pasta, plenty of rice, just the basics things like that. Okay so the next question is do you ever get bored? I feel like I would get bored out of the city. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's a yes. Like, yeah, for sure, I get bored here. I think in the city, I got bored as well. I think, I think if you're gonna feel a certain way, you're gonna feel it anywhere you are. So if you're the kind of person that gets really bored really easily, moving from the city to somewhere like this probably isn't the best thing for you because it will kind of like magnify the boredom a little bit. But same as like, if you lived in a place like this, just really secluded and rural, and you felt bored all of the time. I feel like if you then were like plopped into the city, you might, you know, the, the stimulation of a city might make you feel a little bit better for a little while, but then if you're the kind of person that's just bored easily, then you probably will end up being bored. That's probably going a bit too deep, but yeah, I think definitely you, you do get bored, but I just, I feel like when you get bored, I just catch myself and I'm like, look at where you are. It's literally <laughs> stunning where we live. So I feel like, I don't know, when I get bored I just catch myself and I have a word with myself because I don't think it's right to be bored in the place that we're in because there is so much that you could do. I think the worst time is winter time because where we live when it gets dark in the winter, like 4pm, 5pm, it can be a little bit depressing because there's literally nothing outside. There's no lampposts or um, shop windows with lights, like it's just pitch black. It just feels like you can't go out whereas in a city when it gets dark you can still go for like night walks and stuff and you've got the, the lampposts and the street lights and you can still go for like pretty walks at night. Whereas here if you wanted to go on a night walk it would literally be head torch on, petrified because you can't see anything, well I get scared and um, yeah so there is that. In general, to wrap it up, yes, of course I get bored sometimes, but again, it's not a deal breaker. Like, it's not enough that I don't want to be doing what we're doing and reaching the goals that we're reaching. So, yeah. Next one. Kind of made me laugh. It says, living out there looks nice. Love your pics, by the way. Thank you. But how do you get your hair and beauty treatments done? So this one made me laugh because it was literally a... <laughs> it was a conversation I had with my hairdresser, Winston's coming. Hello! <laughs> um, it was a, a conversation I actually had with my hairdresser before I moved because I'm not a natural ginger, I do get roots and basically I would go and get my hair done pretty regularly in the city by my hairdresser. He is amazing, I, I feel like I would just get the fear of going to anyone else. It was a genuine conversation me and him had. I was like, 
that was the one worry I had before moving. I was like, how am I going to get my hair done? Anyway, when we first moved, I did go back to Edinburgh for a holiday. I think it was around about my birthday time in May. And I got all my hair chopped off. As you can see, I did used to have really long hair. And he's on my roots. And we had a conversation about like who I could go to and stuff. And then basically he said, why don't you just do it yourself? I feel like you would be able to do it yourself. So he kindly told me exactly, basically the stuff that he uses on my hair. He told me where to buy it, how to get it, um, particularly what ones to get, like what dye and peroxide and all that. I think it's called peroxide, <laughs> all of that. But yeah, I now have it and I do my own hair. So to answer the question, my hair, I do it myself. I feel like I'm, I've gotten quite good at it. I'm, I managed to get my roots. I think like maybe around the back is a bit questionable. But when I go back, <clears throat> basically the plan is whenever I visit Edinburgh, like once in a blue moon, I'll try and make sure that he can do my hair then and then he can kind of like fix any bits that I've not done properly. So there's no real good answer to that one because I have just had to come to the conclusion that I need to do my hair myself. For beauty treatments, again, I have had to compromise. I think what I'm going to do though is I am going to order a wax pot just for myself so that I can do my own waxing because I have been shaving for almost the past year since I've moved here and it's not ideal, I don't like it at all. Things like tinting your eyelashes and eyebrows, I do it myself. That, like obviously I'm a trained beauty therapist so I find that quite easy. Winston is making so much noise. Um, yeah, I do my eyelashes and my eyebrows and stuff myself, I just tint that, that is easy enough. Um, I think anyone could probably do that if you were really careful. So the next question is, I'm also thinking about moving but I can't decide between one of the islands or Skye, why did you pick it? So I feel like this is a very, I don't know, maybe like personal thing, personal choice from person to person depending on what you're after. There are lots of different levels of rural living. It really depends what you're after. Basically I think we were really lucky. I don't really know how to answer the question in terms of like how did we choose. I just feel like you need to have a rough idea of where you're wanting to go, how you're wanting it to feel if you're wanting to move somewhere remote and just scope it out, look at different places, look at different locations. If you're thinking of going to view a house in a location, look it up, see what the community's like, see how many people live there, um, things like that, just so that you can get an idea of how remote it is and what it's gonna be like living there. If, if you have a list and there's a couple of things on that list, it'll definitely, you know, narrow it down a bit for you if you want to see view or if you want mountain views or if you want hill views or, if you want it to be like a little cottage just just try and like make a mental list of what your like non-negotiables are and start from there and just have a look and see what's out there and I think also just viewing places even if you don't necessarily think that you're going to put an offer in or it's going to be the, the house that you want to live in just go in places and experiencing where it is how secluded it is I think that's really important as well so um, I hope that helped and yeah good luck in looking and finding a place if you are going to make the move. I do recommend it just personally from my own experience. One of the other questions was how do you survive without sushi? Exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. So basically be being vegan obviously I can't eat proper sushi Sushi isn't really the kind of food that is my personal favourite. Fraser absolutely adores it. He loves vegan sushi. It's not really my jam. But there is a place in Portree, which is uh, maybe like an hour and a bit drive from us. Uh, we went for like a date night. I do have a video actually of that. I'll try and put it somewhere on the screen right now if you want to watch it. But that's a sushi place and it does really good vegan options. It was funny though because the, the day that we went, the woman came up and she was like, yeah, no sushi. We're not doing sushi tonight. And Fraser was like, what? But it's a sushi place. Where's the sushi? <laughs> but what we did order was really nice. It's a little bit more of a commitment for things like that, like date night and going and getting sushi. You really need to think about it and plan it. I live pretty well without sushi. Sushi's not my favourite. If I did want sushi and I got the craving, there is a place. It's just a little bit far away. Okay, so we're on to the last two questions. One of them is quite heavy. <laughs> and it's, do you have any regrets? I don't think I do. I, don't, I definitely don't regret making this decision. Is it hard? 
yes. Do I sometimes want to run screaming in the opposite direction because it's just too stressful and difficult and I just remember back to the times when we were living in the city and it was all just peaceful and, and we just kind of got on with our lives. Do I ever want to just run back to that? Sometimes yes, but then I catch myself and it's only because the situation that we're in is quite stressful because obviously we've just bought our first home together and I don't know how much you follow along um, but we are in the middle of building a cabin on the, the grounds of where we live to run as an Airbnb because essentially moving out here that was the goal. The goal was to have our own business, run an Airbnb whilst living on the premises so that we could run that, have a little more extra income and then hopefully just stop working a little bit earlier in life than we would have. So that's the goal and I think whenever I get really stressed or I think my god why did we do this? This is so difficult, this is like challenging. I just, I think we both get like that, we both do have our moments of getting overwhelmed. I think it's just about kind of like grounding yourself and remembering why. Like if you're going to do anything in life you have to have a solid why and this is a prime example of why because if we didn't have a solid why I think we would have bailed by now. It's literally not even been a year but there has been really stressful times, times where both of us have kind of found it like really difficult and I think if we did, if we weren't doing it for the reason we're doing it, we might have bailed, if that makes sense. But fundamentally, definitely no regrets. Like, I'm so excited about the future and the prospect of what it's going to be like when we have our Airbnb. I think it's just going to be amazing. And we're like working towards this end goal together and we're building a life together. And like obviously in the future going forward, like I really see myself having children here and just giving them that home that, you know, they can always come back to and just, I don't know, yeah, just building a life for a family and all of that, that good stuff, that stuff that makes me feel warm inside. So definitely no fundamental regrets at all. Stress, yes. Regrets, no. So that's to answer that one. And then the last question, I had a lot of trouble with this one just because I feel like I don't really have an answer but it's what is something which is part of your rural daily routine that you wouldn't do in the city? Now I feel like that question just could be answered in, in lots of different ways because I mean obviously we live right on the beach, like literally five minutes, two minutes from the beach. The mountains are like that way you're so rural that you could literally walk out the door in the morning and do all these like outdoor things. You could go like in the sea to swim. I don't do that, but I know people love it. I think since moving here, maybe just like little things, like I find in daily routine, I feel like it's gotten quite wholesome <laughs> since living out here. We have chickens, obviously if you follow me on Instagram then you'll know we have chickens and they are my world, I love them. I think just like things like that, like in the city I could never imagine going out and looking after my chickens and things, just little things like that, like in the morning I have to get up, like regardless even if it's a Sunday and I'm hungover I need to get up super early to let them out of their bed feed them, water them, make sure they're okay. Obviously for me personally in the city I wouldn't be doing that. I know that people do keep chickens in the city but for me that just gives me like a lot of fear because I know that there's a lot of foxes and stuff but you could you could have chickens in the city for sure. I know that people do. I was even speaking to Fraser about this one and we just had like a lot of trouble kind of like answering it. It's just a different way of life. It's a lot slower paced. You don't get that. It's like an energy thing <laughs> like in this city you feel if you go out it's like really busy and I don't know just that like buzzy energy you don't get that here I suppose for me you know like you wake up you open the blinds and you just like look out at the sea and it makes you feel calm and then you look at the mountains again you're just like oh my god it's just so beautiful and I feel like it just starts your day off in a really positive grateful way because you're just so grateful for your surroundings and again that's a personal thing everybody is different. You could wake up in the city, you know, you could have a lovely um, flat in the city and open the windows and, you know, be really grateful for the architecture. Everything's just at your fingertips. You could go get a coffee at your favourite coffee shop. It is just such a personal thing. 
but for me just like overall to kind of answer that question it would probably just be like I don't I wouldn't feel the space and the peace that I do out here that I would in the city and I know that those things do come from inside and you can like bring that up by just feeling it but there is something about being out here and just being out here like in the vastness you know when it's a lovely starry night and you're just like staring up at the sky like the stars out here are insane like I just feel like you don't get the the kind of vastness feeling from when you're in the city because there are other things in there kind of disrupting the views or the way that you're feeling whereas out here you can just like zen <laughs> I feel like that doesn't really answer the question but that was my my best attempt at answering that question I think it really depends on what you want on what your why in life is living rural is definitely not for everyone definitely don't make living rural a goal if it's because you see things on Instagram and you think it looks amazing and blah 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 like you because obviously that's just Instagram and that's just people sharing gorgeous photos like obviously some of my photos of like mountains and the views and whatever like stunning but if it's not ultimately what you want then you'll get bored within a month and you'll be like what have I done so if you are thinking about it just get clear on what the why is get clear on how you see your life going in the next few years we are quite young to have done something like this but the overall kind of like goal of it is just something that we're really passionate about and yeah it just makes me feel happy thinking about the life that we're building here so anyway I hope you enjoyed that I hope I didn't drone on too much I do hope you got something from it um give it a wee thumbs up follow not not follow subscribe <laughs> subscribe follow me on instagram if you want as well and um, i am just be happy soul over there over there you'll see lots and lots of videos of my chickens yeah i hope everyone has a lovely afternoon night morning whatever time of day it is you're watching this hope you got something from it and i'll see you in the next one. Oh, and yes let me know if you do want a video that's kind of like a beginning and kind of like where we are now to how we got here I feel like that is a whole separate video that could be a video in and of its own. So yeah, just let me know if you want me to do one of them. Happy to sit down and have a chin wag and let you know. Anyway, bye.